Have you ever had a change of heart, a change of direction on a project? I haven't. Like my whole life, I've always envisioned a car as a finished thing and then worked on it till I got to the point that it was it fit the, the vision, you know. So this is the first time, I think this is the first time in my whole life that I'm at that point where I'm having a change of heart and a project is going to take a change of direction. But I have good reason for it. So we started this channel almost reasonably three years in September. And in that time, we've built three project cars. You know, we've got Bottle Rocket, we've got uh, the Plan Z Dart, now we have the Miata. All three of them are together running, driving cars, but they all need to be worked out. They all need to go out and do their things. And because of the way we're set up, I'm a one-man band as far as like turning wrenches goes. So I can only do so much. I can only be in so many places. I can only, you know, work on so many things. I think I do a pretty good job, to tell you the truth. But that's, that's besides the point. So the Gambler car, otherwise known as the Slag Hammer, um, the goal was to have this finished by September for the Tennessee Gambler 500. It's not going to happen. I'm sitting here in the middle of July, and I've got our three regular project cars that still need to be worked out before this season is over, you know. The clock is ticking, it's just going. And the Hemi GTX, which was supposed to be a quick in and out thing, it was supposed to be here for a couple of weeks. I mean, I only just got the block up to Pennsylvania this last weekend. Um, we probably, this thing won't be back together again until October or so. And now I've got the other guys with the Valiant. We brought the Valiant here last night that the, uh, the first timers, Austin and Garrett, they're gonna build. So there's a, yet another thing on the plate and this thing. I love this car. I love the idea of this car, and I've spent a lot of time on this car. But the idea of putting it together as an off-roader for the gambler, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And if I don't make the September race this year, the rally, I, I seriously doubt it's going to happen next year. So I've had a change of direction. So I went and picked up the, the roll bar for it this morning. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I think what this car is asking to be, what it wants to be, is a gasser slash street freak. I mean, look at it. It's got the drop front axle. It sits like this, you know? It's got, I mean, it, it has every, all the makings of a badass hot rod, you know? But not really an off-road hot rod, because... You know, I'm not an off-road guy. I, I, I played around with dirt bikes and stuff like that. But I mean, I really know nothing about off-roading. And it really doesn't have a great interest to me. So this is like a car that's going to get built once. It's going it's to spend all of its time and effort putting it together. It's going to get used once or twice. And then it's just going to sit. And then the other thing is I, I can't, you know, okay, I'm too OCD for a dedicated off-road car, right? Um, meaning that, like, the idea of something that I build getting all muddy and encrusted and cracked and rolling over in a ditch and all of that. It's just not for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love the idea of that stuff. And I'd be sh I would be thrilled to do it with somebody else's car. But for me to take something, whoops, for me to take something I build out, you know, and, and try to make it as nice as I possibly can, and then have to like, like decake mud and pull like chunks of like grass and everything out of the nooks and crannies. It's just not for me, you know what I mean? So that's what we're going to do with this car. We're, uh, we're changing direction with it. This is no longer the Gambler car. Um, this is going to be a gasser slash street freak. The difference between a, a gasser, a, a, a true gasser and a street freak, a, a gasser, a traditional gasser, well, I mean, wait, let's get something straight. First off, a traditional gasser does not necessarily have to have a drop front axle or a, tube, a, a straight front axle. Most gassers back in the day had conventional front suspensions. They would raise them up to get the weight transfer. The gassers evolved the way they did because they had very small engines. It was a it was a cubic inch to weight class. So gassers generally had very small 280, 320, 350 cubic inch engines, like at max. And so in order to get those cars to actually transfer weight without having torque, they pre they pre-built the weight transfer into the car. So that you know, with the, with the nose up, all that much more gets to the back tires. Gassers in the day were all sticks. 
Very, very rare you'd find, the only automatic gases you'd ever find were the blown cars, like the AA, double B, double C gas, supercharged, those would be automatics. But everything else was a stick. So you'd, they'd, they'd rev their, their 308 cubic inch engine to 9,000 RPM, sidestep the clutch, they have huge heavy flywheels on them, and that was it, boom, they'd go. The today's gasser is kind of a, 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 an idea rather than a, a duplication of the old days. But that's besides the point. The gasser thing is cool, and I like it. The difference between a gasser and a street freak, gassers had a nose up attitude, they were dropped in the rear. A street freak was up all the way around. It was, there was, a, it was, a, common, it was a common thing in the, the late 60s, the early 70s. So what they were doing is they were, they were, they were emulating that, that out of proportion look that a, that a you know, gasser had. And this thing kind of fits the bill. To make this car work on a, on a, on a drag strip type of thing, I, I mean, I'd have to drop it maybe an inch or two in the back. You know, not that big of a deal. The front end is fine the way it is. And uh, I'm thinking of blown motor. I think I'd like to have a supercharged something or other in here. But that's the, that's, that's the thing now. We're changing direction on this car. Um, you know, I'm sorry if this disappoints any of you guys. You know what I mean? Because I was looking forward to it too. I, I, I worked my tail off on this thing when we first moved into the shop here. I mean, I, I, I welded on it. I mean, you know, with the goal of making this event. But, you know, it's not going to happen. And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I hope you're cool with that, too. So I'm going to pick away at this thing, let's say, over the winter, you know. And uh, in the spring, we'll have something we can go maybe do some hooning with, you know, too, right? You know, just a fun car. And in the meantime, we can dedicate our serious efforts towards the cars that we've already built. They're already ready to run. They're, they're, they're waiting to fulfill their destiny and their purpose. You know, or scatter themselves, either way, it makes for a great video, right? Regardless of what direction we go with this car, it's definitely you know, more street or more strip. Either way, it's definitely going to be a big block. This is the, uh, the 3 to 3 that we had planned on building for it. This was going to be just normally aspirated. I got a nice set of closed chamber heads over here that I got to set up for it. Um, but this was going to be a single four barrel, you know, for for off-road thing, um, but it's it's definitely going to take on a different different character this time around. Uh, I would like to have a supercharged motor in the in the in the mix, so there's a good chance that this will end up being it. Now they don't make any, nobody makes as far as I know, and I I, I look for it. Um, nobody makes a low deck Mopar blower manifold, so we'll probably end up having to fabricate one ourselves out of like a dual quad manifold or something like that. Um, but again, see, not sure yet, it's, it's an evolving idea, it's an evolving project. But, uh, you know, you guys, I mean, we have every other engine, every other Chrysler engine is like pretty well represented here, you know. You know, we got, we got slant sixes, we got small blocks, you know. Uh, we do have a big block stroker build planned for like next year, you know. Uh, we have that, that blue roadrunner that's in the garage, that's like a pre-channel project car. Um, that's got a 400 in it now, but I've got a 452 uh, that I want to build for that. But again, that won't be until next year, possibly even the year after. We have, we have project cars lined up, literally, for the next two or three years, right? You know, we only talk about the ones that we're currently working on, but this stuff is lined up. I have more than enough stuff to keep me busy until well after I'm dead. So we're not going to run out of material anytime soon. But like I said, it's this, this car, one way or the other, no matter what direction it takes, is going to be a big block. So that'll keep you big block guys busy for, or happy for a little while, I hope. So that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.